going to fold. They'll never make it, they tell me. They have no speed. Their pitching outside of Roger Clemens, questionable. They just can't hold a lead. Well, I don't know exactly who is saying all this, except there must be a lot of Yankee fans I know who are engaging in wishful thinking to this impartial observer, though. I tell you, the Boston Red Sox look pretty good to me now in the AL East. McNamara's band took up the baton against uh, the Texas Rangers Tuesday night at Fenway Park, looking for their second straight win over the Rangers. Bottom of the third, 1-0 Texas, but the Red Sox, with the bases loaded, Bill Buckner lining a shot to the left center field gap. Henderson scores, Spike Owen scores. The Sox add one more and lead it 3-1. The Rangers fight back, though. It's now 3-2, top of the fourth, runners at the corners. And Al Nipper's pitch to Totemy McDowell, deep enough to right. The play at home, but Steve Buschel scores to tie the game at three. Same inning now, it is 4-3 Texas. The rookie, Ruben Sierra, slow roller over reliever Sammy Stewart's head. Marty Barrett gets to it, but can't get Sierra. Another run, it's 5-3 Rangers. John McNamara, the Boston skipper, doesn't want to look. Bottom of the sixth, though, same score man on first. We have a tie game. Don Baylor nearly hits the light tower in left. It's tied at five. Bottom of the seventh, same score, 5-5. Five, five. Red Sox have the bases loaded. Marty Barrett, a seeing high base hit. Right up the middle, Henderson scores. Ed Romero is waved around third. He'll score. And the ball trickles away from Darrell Porter, and the Red Sox to lead it 7-5. Go on to win it by a score of 8-6. to six. AL East leaders as they swept the Rangers with a ninth inning win this evening. Bottom of the third, the knuckleballer, Charlie Huff, working with two out against Wade Cranberry Boggs, who sits on it and drives Ruben High Sierra. Back, 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 back. Forget it. It's gone in the bullpen. Homer number eight in the year for Boggs. We're tied at one. Bottom of the six, two out, one on. Tony Armas, who's been warming up for the Red Sox, slices a hit to right field. Jim Rice running on the two-out pitch scores, and it's two to one Red Sox. Top of the seventh inning, runner at third for Texas with two out. Toby Last Harrod, the slow bouncer to Boggs at third. Charges it, but throws the ball away. Gino Petralli scores. We're tied at two. Bottom of the seven. Mitch Williams on in relief. Runners at the corners with two out. Billy Buckner, base hit through the right side for Boston. Boggs scored. Three to two, Boston. And Buckner is pretty psyched up about the whole situation. Top of the ninth. Bob Stanley on in relief of Tom Leave at the receiver. Gets the comeback. A throw to second for one. Spike Owen. Hey, where's this throw going? Bob Bulldog Brower scores, and we're tied at three. But in the bottom of the ninth, Wade Boggs goes opposite field. Pinch runner Lachelle Tarver running from first base. They're going to score from first in Fenway. The Red Sox, if Rowe is not in time. Boggs, three for five. The Red Sox with a run of the bottom of the ninth. Win it by the score of four to three. As we mentioned, they've won five in a row all at Fenway. The Strangers have now lost. on his back, number 21. But early on, top of the third, one out number, uh, man on second and third, her back. A little dribbler that bobbled by Marty Barrett. In comes Gagne. It's one nothing Twins. And immediately, Clemens is in the hole. And almost immediately, he is taken out of it in the bottom of the third. Base is loaded, but not for long. Jim Rice with his fifth career grand slam. Six times this year, the Sox have hit slams. Five of those with Clemens on the hill. And then in the fifth, more. Marty Barrett comes through with the fourth homer of the year. This is a three-run shot, and it's all but over. Billy Buckner ended it with a two-run shot of his own, his 11th of the year, 12-2 to the final. Clemens. And winning like they have for the past week, they could taste the playoffs for the first time since 75. On Saturday, it was more ninth-inning heroics, this time against the Minnesota Twins. 2-1 two Twins. Bottom of the eighth, Red Sox playing comeback, runners on first and second, two outs. George Frazier pitching. Jim Rice, who's three for four, hits this shot past Gary Gaetti. Wade Boggs scores. Boston ties it up. Do it, do it. Top of the ninth. Dennis Oil Can Boyd shuts down the Twins. He already has two Ks against Tom Bernanski. He punches him out for his third. Boyd strikes out the side. The can is back. Bottom of the ninth. Lead runner Dave Henderson on second. Two outs. Keith Atherton pitching. Atherton goes inside. I mean inside. Nearly nails Marty Barrett. Two pitches later, Barrett comes back. Bingo. Right field. Two for five was Barrett. Henderson will try to score on this one. Bruno comes up throwing, but uh-uh. He's safe. Boston wins in the ninth. How many times have they done it? 15 times this season. They've won in the ninth inning. There's the happy man, the can victorious. Nine innings, six hits. Austin, it looked like the Twins would strike in the third, though, against Bruce Hurst with runners at first and third. Kirby Puck at the batter, and uh, he grounds one to Wade Boggs. He comes home to Mark Sullivan, and he puts the tag on Steve Lombardozzi.
Next batter, Gary Gaetti, and Gaetti with the base hit to left field. Ron Washington now trying to score from second base. Jim Rice with the throw home. His throw is right on the money. Washington out at the plate. Red Sox explode in the bottom of the third against Neil Heaton. one nothing. The bases are loaded. Jim Rice takes this one over the right field wall. Grand slam for him, number 16 for the season. Second grand slam in three days, 5 nothing. Boston. Then in the fifth inning, Bill Buckner gets his chance. Uh, this time, though, the base is empty. Buckner slams one off the right field foul pole. Number 12 for Buckner, the solo homer, made it 6 to nothing. And the Red Sox went on to win easily this afternoon by the score of 9 to nothing. Their eighth straight victory. Hurts is loaded, forcing in the winning run. And the White Sox come from behind to beat the Blue Jays by the score of 4 to 3. Gene Nelson uh, getting the victory. Jim Clancy taking the loss. So with that loss, the Jays now drop 6.5 back of Boston and after slide they lost to the Angels in Anaheim today they are now ten and a half games back of Boston in the East they haven't been that far out since the final day of the Evans night. glove for a double now Evans uh, usually catches that kind of ball he really should have caught it and he knows he should have caught it as he walks back to his position still one nothing into the fourth inning until you got it Dwight Evans he takes his frustrations out on a Mike Flanagan pitch it's gone. Jim Rice aboard. Evans 20th homer, 84th RBI. Red Sox lead it 2-1. to one. But in the bottom of the fifth, Lee Lacey lines out to Rice and left, or does he? You be the judge. Got it? Uh, no. The umpire ruled it was a catch, and I have to agree with him, although it was a very tough call. Umpire Rick Reed, I think, made the right call. Obviously, Earl Weaver doesn't agree. Then leading off the sixth, Jim Rice sends a drive deep to center. Now, John Shelby's going to try and pull this one back in. Oh, nice try, John. It goes off his wrist and part of his glove. Rice's 17th homer, 3-1 to one Boston. Bottom of the eight, two outs. Tom Seaver fans Eddie Murray. Murray then represented the tying run. Bottom of the ninth now. Pinch hitter Juan Benitez against the ace out of the bullpen for Boston. Calvin Chiraldi, Larry Sheets, and Jim Traber are on the bases. It's 3-1. to one. Look at this. A left center field, Gappa. Larry Sheets and Traber score. We are tied at three. We'll move to extra innings now. Top of the 11th. The Bo Sox, Bill Buckner, who's come up with so many big hits down the stretch, doubling to right. Wade Boggs would score easily from third. That made it four to three. The Red Sox get five more in the top of the 11th. The final score in 11 innings, Boston beats Baltimore. Look at John McNamara. No wonder he's smiling. Boston wins it nine to three. Short. One nothing. Orioles threatening with two on in the bottom of the second. And watch Floyd Rayford tag Al Nipper. Deep there into the night, even the sound is good. Number four of the year for Rayford, 3-1 Orioles. They led 4-1 to one after four, but it was 4-2 Orioles in the Red Sox seventh. Dwight Evans jumps all over this one and watches it go and takes a walk up the first baseline. Number 21 for Evans, 4-3 Orioles. Later in the inning, Boston with two on. Marty Barrett, fair ball down the left field line. Rich Gedman will score, and as the ball bounces around out in left field, Spike Owen is, is waved around. The Red Sox will uh, make it a 5-4 lead. Then in the top of the eighth, Evans against Bordy again. This one lifted high and deep to left down the left field line, and it will carry for number 22 of the year. Boston leads at 6-4. to four. It was 7-5 to five Red Sox in the bottom of the ninth. The Orioles with two on. Watch the game-ending play. Joe Sambito with a great stab. One, six, three, double play. The Boston Red Sox win number 10 in a row, and they are very definitely on a roll. Sox Wednesday night as they took on the Baltimore Orioles, intent on reducing their magic number in the American League East. Let's see how it all came about. Top of the first scoreless game, Red Sox with a man on it, Bill Buckner lacing a base hit to left. Jim Traber, not known for his glove, overruns the ball, but he finally comes up with it. He throws it into the Chesapeake Bay and ends up in the Orioles' dugout. Marty Barrett comes around to score. The Red Sox have an early one to nothing lead. Jim Rice, who's really got his home run swing going, tags Kenny Dixon. Also on the top of the first, see you later, is right. Two-run homer for Rice, three nothing Red Sox after one with the score three to two. And the Orioles threatening, John Shelby smacking a double to right field. field. John Stafiro and Floyd Rayford come around to score. They were on base at the time, the and the Orioles come from behind to grab a 4-3 to three lead. Red Sox rally, though, on the top of the fifth with two on. Bill Buckner, ground ball that Jackie Gutierrez cannot field cleanly. Wade Boggs scores. We are tied at four. Buckner, four for five of the night. Then here comes that man again, Jim Rice. No home run, but here he'll punch a base hit to center. Marty Barrett scores again. Rice, four for five on the night. The Sox go on to win it by a score of nine to four. So the Boston Red Sox have won 11 games in a row. That's their longest winning streak since 1977. That's the last play showing tonight at Yankee Stadium. What a night it was for the Sox. Two on, two out in the third. 
Winfield rips a single to center. Willie Randolph coming round third. Armas charging hard, but he won't get Randolph. Yanks take a 2-0 lead. Then Scott Nielsen touched by Billy Buckner on a 3-2 pitch. His 16th homer of the season makes it a 2-2 game on the fourth inning. Sixth inning, Buckner does it again. The second straight night, he's had two homers, five homers in his last three games. He's on fire, and the Sox are up 3-2. In the eighth inning, Buckner does it again off Rod Scurry. This time, just a mere single. Bouncing it up the middle, that scores Marty Barrett. Henry Cotto comes up with a throw that's offline. And Buckner gets into second. Skinner's throw is wide. Five to two Red Sox. Tim Stoddard now on. And Jim Rice way back. Henderson given chase, given chase. Uh-uh, he won't get it. Rice with his 20th career homer at Yankee Stadium. Red Sox win it 7-2. to two. They have won 12 of their last 13. Bruce Hurst has won now. The Yankees. Scoreless game, bottom of the first Red Sox leadoff better. Wade Boggs, the leading hitter now in the American League, slices the drive to left. Ben Ogilvy with a great catch. Great catch, but he had to leave the game. He injured his left shoulder, but still a great effort by Ben. Red Sox starting pitcher Roger Clemens cruising in the third, but two on and two outs for the Brewers. They got a threat. Robin Yount is at the plate. He's a good fastball hitter. Not that time. High heat. Strikeouts in the first, uh, rather, yeah, strikeouts in the first four innings for Clemens. Then Wade Boggs drives a double into the gap in right center. Spike Owen scores in the bottom of the fifth. The game is tied at one. Boggs keeps his hitting streak alive at that point at 17 games. Rob Deere brought his 33 homers to the plate and calmly takes a seat. Right down the middle, 10 Ks for Clemens at that point. Bottom of the seventh score, still tied at one. Milwaukee starter Juan Nieves kissing the old good luck charm. I guess Dwight Evans does not collect necklaces because he'll take this one way, way out, giving it some sit-go zoom in Boston. It's gone. The Red Sox win it 2-1. to one. What about Roger and his 23rd win? You know, I'm not in a situation where I can let that up. We're not out of a pennant race or anything like that where it'd be easier on another guy that's got 18 or 19 wins or something like that. Uh, but it, it's tough out here. You have to just keep uh, keep pumping them in there. The guys are counting on me to, to stop losing streaks or to... Uh, to pitch well, and, and that's what I tried to do tonight. Three and four, he and Mel Parnell are now bosom buddies as uh, members of the Boston Red Sox record book. All right, what happened in game number two? Well, in game two, the Fenway fans, not even the man on the moon can beat the Red Sox these days. Bottom of the first, one man on, rookie Pat Dodson smacks a single to center. Wade Boggs would score. The Sox led it one to nothing at this point. Now, after a double by Jim Rice, Don Baylor is your batter. Smashed to third base. Molitor comes up with a nice uh, grab there, but then he throws it into the back bay and a couple of runs score. It is 3-0 Red Sox. They give Jim Rice the plate as well as Dodson. With a score 3-2 Boston, top of the eighth. The Brewers still hanging in there. Calvin Chiraldi pitching to Paul Molitor. First pitch, see it. There it goes into the bullpen in right center. And it is 3-3. And Yankee and Blue Jay fans were hoping against hope for a Milwaukee win. But in the bottom of the eighth, after Dwight Evans had doubled, really pitcher Mark Clear uncorks a wild one. Rick Cerrone can't trap it. Evans moves up to third on the play. And on the next pitch, Dave Henderson hits a line shot to short. Oh, there goes the boot by Milwaukee's Eddie Diaz. He can't come up with it. Evans scores. Henderson motors in the second. The Sox lead 4-3. They go on in to win it in a walk. 9-3. to three. The Red Sox win a double dip. Their magic number is now 9, and Boston has won 14 of 17, including 38 comeback victories in this remarkable season in New England. Meanwhile, with Dennis Oil Can Boyd on the mound, always an entertaining guy to watch. We'll go to highlights now from the Fens. Now, Oil Can against the Brujas. Here he has his stuff moving on this one, catching Rick Manning. Asleep at the switch. Boyd looks impressive. That was Manning snoring, not me. Bottom of the second scoreless. Don Baylor on first, and he's running. Yes, Baylor is running. Dwight Evans high off the monster in left. He nails a Mark Knudsen pitch. Baylor is still running. When he gets going, it's tough to stop. one nothing. The Red Sox later made it 2 nothing. Bottom of the third, the Sox threatening again. Runners at the corners. The pitcher is still Mark Knudsen against Don Baylor. Baylor on a good breaking ball. Take a seat, Don. And in the fifth, he gets Jim Rice looking as he shut down Rice all night. Knudsen was the last second starter for Milwaukee. But he didn't shut down Don Baylor. There it goes. And Baylor doesn't have to run this time. He can sit and admire this one. Homer number 25. Are the homer number 30 on the season for Don Baylor, 3 0. Next batter, he's got 30. Next batter, Evans, two minutes later, hits a tremendous shot into the light tower. 24th dinger of the year, and the Fenway faithful love it for Dwight Evans. Way to go, Dewey. Boyd looked good all night. Here, getting Rick Manning to fly to right, where the other hero of the night, Evans, makes a fine grab. And the Red Sox win it by a score of 4 to 1. The Bo Sox magic number to win the American League East is now down to 7. 
and it is the 15th win this year for Oil Can Boy. That is a career high. Meanwhile, from Fenway Park, and the chill was in the air. The October chill? Yeah, I guess so. Evans takes off. Tony Armas, meanwhile, the bottom of the second loops it towards the gap in left center. Robin Yao can't play it cleanly. Dwight Evans scores the Red Sox lead to one to nothing. Bottom of the third, Milwaukee defense is falling apart. Watch Tony Armas hit an easy grounder to short. There it goes, one hop, two hops, and Edgar Diaz just pulls the glove up too fast. Bases are loaded. Little leaguers, keep your glove on the ground till you get the ball. Next batter, Rich Gedman, singles to left. Glenn Braggs, you won't really see it here, but he lets the ball get by him. He boots it. Buckner scores. Dwight Evans scores. And the throw goes into third and hits Armis and allows him to come around and score. It's 5 0 Red Sox, and the route is on. Plenty of support for pitcher Bruce Hurst. The lefty went the distance for his 10th complete game. And look at that curveball. Are you kidding me? That's almost unfair. The final, the Red Sox win it over the uh, Milwaukee Brewers by a score of 7-1. to one. Boston's magic number in the American League East is now 6. They'll open up a series on Friday in Toronto. And, and he got some help along the way. Top of the first, Jimmy Key was on the mound for Toronto. Dave Sachs, deep to left. It clears the fence for his first major league home run. It was 1-0 Boston. Then to the top of the third, Rich Gedman. He goes to right field for his 16th homer of the season. That's another solo shot. It's 2-0 Boston. Boston looking pretty good early in the game. Top of the fifth, 2-1 Boston. Dwight Evans. He goes to left for another Red Sox homer, another solo shot. Number 25 for Evans. It's 3-1 Red Sox. When he got around to the dugout, he explained to his manager, John McNamara, just how he did it. He said, well, I kind of went out to left field, and I knew I could hit it out there. And then I got the bat around, and I pushed it, and that's where it went. Bottom of the fifth, 3-2. Three three. Manny Lee's on first. Rance Mullenix goes deep to right. Looks like it's going, but no. There's Evans again. He makes the catch for the third out. Clemens took care of it on his own in the eighth. He gets George Bell swinging. But Clemens went out in the ninth. McNamara brought in Calvin Schiraldi to close it out. Schiraldi goes after Rick Leach. Gets him. Red Sox win it by the score of three to two. Clemens now 24 and four. He's the American League's first 24 game winner since Lamar Hoyt did it with Chicago back in 1983. Five strikeouts for him today. He leads the American League with 232. It's his seventh straight win and his 14th in the. A sweeter harbinger of spring. As the winter gave way to the warm summer sun, Dwight Evans showed the way. And it wasn't the midnight ride of Paul Revere. The ride for the Red Sox had begun. And there was Mr. Consistency, that brilliant night when he wrote his name in gold letters in the Red Sox history book and in the history book of Major League Baseball. There was another great individual of many, and he came up with his blow against the team the Red Sox figured to meet in the fall. First place, the fifth. 15th of May, the ride had just begun. But there were injuries, there were bills to be paid, and Nipper and Hurst were called upon to pay them. But the ride continued, and the veteran hands of Tom Seaver came aboard. And then there was trouble, a low spot. The bubble had burst, and whatever other label you want to put on it, it was a temper tantrum. But back to Mr. Consistency. Once more, the Red Sox were in good hands. The calm, cool, and capable hands of Roger Clemens, and all was well by the end of August. And summer has gone, and fall is here, and the Toronto Heroics has slowed up the ride, but only for another day or two. It is inevitable. The Red Sox are on their last few strides to the American League Eastern Division flag. Boston Red Sox. The game of the week is brought to you by Miller Highlight. Breaking ball down, and he went after it. So Fernandez opens up with a strikeout. A lot of it now. Yep. Hitting 255, and it didn't help him. So Bruce Hurst starts out with two strikeouts, although I must say. One made by Cooper. And he lifts it to center field, and there is Armis to catch it at the knees. No runs, one hit. They leave Gruber at second, and we're locked up scoreless as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Now back. And there's one.
catch it. Look how far he is. Look at this throw. Couldn't get anything on it. The accuracy is incredible. And Upshaw, close. like a pair of scissors, opened up, and Baylor trying to slide his way to break the perfect game. Two down in the fifth inning after a fine play by Barfield and Wright, a super play by Tony Fernandez. And here is Dwight Evans. It's kind of a play you used to see only an Ozzy Smith make, and here's a kid Fernandez making, and it, the way they talk about him, like he's been making them all year and hitting. Well, you see two plays back to back like that, and you begin to start looking at the zero. Evans struck out in the second inning. Ball one. One one. Probably the best game Evans had with the bat six years ago. He had a five hit game against Toronto. But that's a long time ago. Three and one. High drive into deep left field. She is a win. yesterday's magic moments here at Fenway Park as the Red Sox wrapped up their first division title since 1975. Here's Eric Reed.
was the game that all of New England had waited for, and Oil Can Boyd had the opportunity to pitch the Red Sox to their first division crown since 1975. And Boyd was gunning for his career-high 16th victory, so the magic filled Fenway right from the very beginning of this very special Sunday. Strike three. A 9K day for the can. Toronto rookie Dwayne Ward never made it past the second. His troubles began with Tony Armas at second and Rich Gedman in the batter's box. And he rats one toward the gap in center field, out of the reach of the diving Mosby, but he does stop it. Here comes Armas to the plate. one nothing Boston. Ward then loaded the bases with a fielder's choice and a walk, so Toronto manager Jimmy Williams called for Joe Johnson, the Plainville, Massachusetts native, who beat the Sox just 10 days ago. But with the bases full, Johnson threw ball four to Marty Barrett, bringing home Rich Gedman with Boston's second run. And for the defending division champion Blue Jays, it got worse quickly. Chop to the pitcher and the plate. Play there, gets away from Ernie Witt. Owen scores. They had a force play easily. And Witt dropped the ball. And the Jays just faded away. Five Red Sox runs in the second. The last couple thanks to the DH. Baylor up the middle. And it's going into center field. This will score two more runs. Five nothing. Six zip on Barrett's third inning ribby. In the Blue Jay fourth, the can lost his shutout. After a Rance Mullenix double, Lloyd Mosby took oil deep to the seats beyond the bullpen in right. Number 21 for Mosby and 6-2 Boston. Toronto's third pitcher, Dennis Lamp, started the fourth frame dubiously as Jim Rice reached on the Tony Fernandez error at short. With one out, Dwight Evans doubled Rice to third, and then Rich Gedman was walked intentionally to load him for Spike Owen. And Lamp walked him unintentionally, bringing home Rice and another Red Sox run to make it 7-2. And Boston's four-run fourth was just beginning. Bouncing ball toward the middle. He's got it. Evans will score. Here comes Gedman. He will score. Owen to third. And two more runs for Boston. It's 9-2. And a tip of the cap to Wade Boggs, the first player in Sox history to collect 200 hits in four straight seasons. Up 10 to three in the eighth, the Sox added a couple of more runs. Boggs and Barrett with the RBI, they combined to drive in seven of Boston's dozen runs. These Red Sox of 86 grab first place in the AL East back on May 15th and never let it go. And in the ninth, the final division crown countdown was on at full blast at Fenway Park. The curveball dropped over for strike three. Number nine for Boyd. <laughs> to left field, Jim Rice, two out. may do it. Buckner is there. It's all over. The Red Sox are the new division champions. gonna do it I called it right to me uh -huh. no one's gonna get it nobody else is gonna get that ball well they called out there and said come on in we said no way we're running we're gonna you know I, I had goosebumps and running out on that field and hearing the crowd going crazy and you know Boston's been waiting for a winner and we finally brought him on and Boggs to lead things off Boggs Barrett and Buckner in the bottom of the first inning no score in game two 
to deep left center field and Pettis looking up at the wall it is off the wall and bounding away from him Kendrick picks it up and throws a rainbow to third and backed up by McCaskill as Bodge triples. They've been trying to get him out with curveball. There is one up in the strike zone. This is a hitter's type of day. Flag blowing straight out. Right there, Pettis sees the ball is going to be off the wall. And then the carom's over his head. It was lucky that pitch wasn't over. His and the 3 2 to Barrett is hit down the line in right field for a base hit. That scores Bods. Hendrick plays the carom. Barrett has a double. The Red Sox have the lead. Run and lead one to nothing. Fintech. Breaking pitch, got him looking, strike three. And at the end of an inning and a half, it's the Red Sox one and the Angels nothing. One two pitch is chopped toward short. Schofield has it take a wicked hop and it winds up in center field and a break for the Red Sox. It would have at least been a force. The American League batting championships. As it's chopped to the left of the mound and lost in the sun by McCaskill. So we've already seen the outfielders with problems and now on a chopper McCaskill can't find the baseball. Oh two pitch is grounded base hit in the left field as Gedman scores and they hold on. While he joined it with a count one and oh hits it high in the air and deep to right field and into the corner goes Evans and makes the catch. He plays it like he owns it and he should. He's owned it since 1972. Dewey Dewey is the salute for Evans. That's his nickname as he and the go grounded to third and Boggs knocks it down and that's all. And Wade had a lot of things to think about at one time. Runners going or is down. And he chops it toward the hole. It's backhanded by Owen, and he's too late to third. Couldn't get the ball out of his glove. And so the Red Sox commit another blunder, and the Angels get on the board, and it's two to one. A drive to deep right field. Evans goes all the way back to the wall with Armis and gone into the bullpen. And Joyner, who just came up short, and Evans had to reach to take an extra base hit away from him in the third, has hit a home run here to tie the game. Hours Evans spends with him. And he pops it up a mile high, back of second base. And it's Grinch and it's Schofield looking at each other, and it's in there to give Boston the lead. base with one out and that's wrapped into left field for a base hit Rice up with the ball and they are holding him at third and as he rounds third Grinch is tagged out and Grinch is really angry with Moose Stooping the third base coach because Stooping never gave a sign I was looking at Stooping and Moose was not giving Grinch a sign and that's why Bobby is furious and he had nowhere to go because as he tried to go back Schofield was heading toward third. Pointed that he did not hold up Grinch. And Hurst gets out of it. The Red Sox with some rabbit feet in the sixth and a 3 2 lead after five and a half. That's grounded to the right side. Barrett to Owen to first, and Buckner stays on the bag. American League and walks with 114. This year it was Wade Boggs. Grounded to third. Knocked down by the Sensei. And he doesn't make the tag. And Doug, who might have had a double play, gets nothing. 4-2 Boston. As Gedman grounds it down to second and Gritch goes to Schofield one. Back to first and they still can't get the double play. And a second run will score as Baylor crosses the plate and the Red Sox lead six to two. Doug Corbett. Corbett 
who wears eye black very rare for a pitcher but he doesn't need it right now. Jim Rice at the plate it's a high drive to deep right center field Pettis goes back gone. Well, there's that noisy bat we talked about. Corbett a sinker ball pitcher throws the ball down the strike zone the last time they threw Rice a low fastball he zinged it into center. This time he deposits in. now on the verge of getting even knocked down by Boggs goes to second and we are even score after one in game five top half of the ball and then it's ripped down the line in right field and into the corner and gone a home run for Gedman. one pitch after Witt nearly had him struck out Gedman lashes one down the line and out of here Fenway and hit three here in six regular season games and now another in the playoffs well, notice the old stance and that's an adjustment he made a couple of years ago when he hit 24 home runs used to be closed go into the ball it's worked very well for him to deep left field down the line into the corner and it is gone Blues. it's two to one Game 20 some years. To shallow left field, Rice gets a very late start and makes the catch. And as Jim mentioned, on the fly ball to Downing, doubled off the wall and then hit one off the end of the bat in the air to left field. And this one is hit in the air to right center field and up the gap for extra bases. The Sensei will pull in at second with a double. Austin in the last of the sixth. Center field and deep and carrying and gone, but just off his glove for a home run. people in New England field. 5-2 California. Toward the middle and by the diving Schofield who just missed it. And ball. To left field, left center and deep Pettis goes back, leaps and she's gone. And it's 5-4. The sensei calls. One out to go. Look out. Ooh, got hit on the hand on a pitch in on him. So Lucas. Donnie Moore out of the bullpen to face Dave Henderson. Long way from Seattle. To left field and deep and down he goes back and it's gone. Unbelievable. Henderson 
come up with the top of the ninth inning. Oh! That's second only to Fisk in the minds of everybody in New England. Oh! Just astonishing. Sharply by Barrett for a base hit. Evans can throw. Jones is coming home. The throw home is there. No, he's safe. <laughs> Aaron goes. It's hit in the air to deep left field. Deep left field. Rice to the fence. And he makes the catch. And had to look down to make sure. He's around a bunt, and he bunts in the air up the line, and it's a fair ball to Sensei Fields, and pulls Will Fung off, and everybody's safe. And it's drilled to the gap in left center field, deep enough to score a run. Pettis makes the catch. Baylor tags. Red Sox lead 7-6. Base hit. He's 4 for 4 today. And Romero hits one to deep left field. And Romero, and what a catch by Melly! And the runners have to get back. Seeing this game, he'd off in the bottom of the 11th. Popped up. Here comes Stapleton. Next plane to Boston. High drive to deep left field, driving Rice all the way to the fence, and that one's off the very top of the wall. Scores Jackson, throw to Barrett, not in time. It's 2-0. And just a few feet away from it being 3-0 on a Fenway double. And there's your ground ball. And we're tied. Toward the gap in left center and nobody is there. Owen will score. Bonds will be held. Barrett has a double. That's ripped to center for a base hit. Barrett will be held at third as Bond scores 4-2. Toward the gap in right center field and a base hit in front of Jones. And Buckner has to be held at third and Rice is nearly toward third. Rich cuts it off and then throws the ball away by Wolfon. Buckner comes in to score. The ball winds up out of play. And they will award, I believe, yes, home plate to Rice and third to Baylor. And Ivan after three, seven to Boston. Broken back, pop up, great catch by Owen. We're down to one, California against Boston for the American League pennant. The Angels with their seventh different batting order and a good bunt by Wilfon, who does this a lot, but Boggs is equal to the task. Make up your mind. Buckner does it himself, and the Angels are done in the top of the first. After a half, California nothing, and the Red Sox coming up. Been a right-handed hitter. And in the bottom of the second inning, Jim Rice starts things by grounding it toward the hole. Nice play by Schofield, but a bad throw into the dugout. And they give him second base. That's grounded slowly to second, fielded by Burleson, and the only play is first. 1-0 Boston. 
No chance for a double play and another count. Bases loaded, two down, one nothing Boston in the second. Hit back through the middle, hits second base, and Karen's into right center field. Baylor scores, so does Evans. Henderson is held at third, three nothing. Well, I think the way Boston. Broken bat, hit softly, backhanded, no play. And so Buckner, and he's hobbling, and he's been doing that much of the season. And throughout his career, in fact, playing hurt, have to come out of the game. Well, what he did, Al, was he has a chronically left ankle that bothers him from a standpoint of having bone spurt. But what he hurt in Los Angeles or in Anaheim was his Achilles tendon. And that's why he's coming out of the game. And Clemens has a 1 2 3 inning. We played three and a half in game seven. Boston three, California nothing. You want to move it back, you want to move it towards the plate. To deep center field, going all the way back as Pettis to the fence, leaps and drops the ball. And Henderson is around second and goes to third. with a naked eye, Pettis may have slightly mistimed his jump because he appeared to be there and may have jumped just... And it's a looper to shallow right. Here comes Jones, and he can't make the play. And Henderson scores, and it's 4 zip. Down four runs, a big out. Runners go, pitches a curve, hits a deep left field. See the flight of the ball hits it up on the bat. He is so strong, ends up hitting the light tower. And up there with the transformers. So he transforms a four-nothing ball game into a seven-nothing ball game. Here comes Laxman, and there goes Candelaria. In comes Sutton. Seven nothing, Boston. The ninth, and now Fenway stands as one again. Eight to one. The look on Giraldi's face Saturday night and then Sunday the turnaround and now tonight they're two outs away over which show for Bob Boone. The Red Sox are trying to go from last right to the World Series. And they do.
Boston Red Sox, champions of the American League.